learn how to knit stretchy rib stitches. These stitches are used in many things. Today we're going to learn the one by one and the two by two rib stitch. You'll learn about multiples and we'll dive into a pattern and making this nice headband for you in today's how to knit series, the one by one and two by two rib stitch. Learning for complete beginners, lesson four. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To make the rib stitch, you don't have to use this super bulky six weight yarn that I'm using here. You can use a smaller yarn and smaller needles. I happen to be using a US 11 needle on this one over here. And actually it's the same yarn over here and I'm using a US 15 needle. Uh, either one is fine. You can even use a 13 in between and they all work really well. It is recommended for an 11 with this yarn. The yarn I'm using today is Bernat Softy Chunky and this is color gray heather. It is again a super bulky six weight yarn and the recommended needles is a US 11 which is an eight millimeter needle. If you are going to work the pattern, you'll click down in the links below to get that and you're going to need a measuring tape a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends, and also scissors. Which brings me to the point, we're going to go over the stitches first, and then I will lead you through the entire pattern, and we'll also use our tapestry needle, and I will show you how to sew in the ends together. So you're actually going to learn a new step in learning how to read patterns, and uh, a sewing technique here as well, so you get it to uh, follow along in the pattern. We're also going to bind off in pattern in this particular tutorial. So you get a lot of things packed in here. If you want the basics, we'll put them right in here in the very beginning. So stay tuned. Rib stitches are great because they are so nice and stretchy and such a pretty textural stitch. You've got a lot of three dimension effect in it and nice and stretchy. So we have two different ones here, one by one and two by two. The first number is always the number of columns of stitches that are right next to each other. And then the second number is the columns of pearls. So in this one, I have one column of knit followed by a column of pearl and we call that one by one or it looks like one X one. And then over here we have a two by two where it's two columns of knit followed by two columns of pearl. You can change it up and do um, a three by three where there's three knits together and three pearls together for an even wider look than this or say you wanna do um, three columns uh, of knits here and then maybe a skinnier part of pearls here. So you can change that up however you like. So let's jump in to how you work one of these. Okay, so to begin, you need to have your knitting already on there. We're just gonna go in how you do it and then we'll get into uh, starting it from scratch here in a moment after uh, I demonstrate. So it's a two row repeat. The first row, the right side row, is how you wanna have it set up to where it's uh, nice and even. You start off your pattern here with uh, a multiple of the stitches that you want, however many knits and then purls, and then you repeat that throughout. And then you wanna have the same number of knits you started with for the last few stitches. So let's just get into this one here. It's a one by one. So I have um, an odd number casted on. I've got 15 on this one. And I'm just going to knit this first stitch. And then I want to purl the next stitch. So we're just going to put our yarn in front and purl that stitch. And so I'm going to repeat that throughout until the very end and then I just need to make sure that I have one stitch left over and knit that stitch. So go ahead and put my yarn to the back and knit again and put my yarn to the front and purl again. Okay. So you would continue working that all the way down. Now you don't have to follow me right away, but you can and pause your video. I'm just gonna chat for a moment. Make sure that when you're working your knitting that you're putting your yarn forward and back as you go because if you accidentally leave it in the front and you purled and then I go on to knit the next stitch, I'm going to cause a yarn over. Okay, I'm gonna cause an increase and we have gone over that in previous lessons. So make sure that you are not adding in your stitches or 
your ribbing is going to stop looking like ribbing and it's going to start looking like something else. So let's just get to the end and then I'll show you what row two looks like. Okay, so the end, let's see, I've got one last stitch here and we're just going to knit that last stitch. Now when we turn it over, we do the opposite for the one by one. We're going to put our yarn in the front and we're going to purl that stitch. So this was a purl on the back side because we had a knit on the front side. So I said back side, it's the wrong side. So we're just gonna purl that first stitch and then you can see that the very next one is a knit stitch. So we're gonna put our yarn to the back and we're going to knit it. And then you keep repeating that. Purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. So you just continue that on. So if you do have to put this down and you don't finish the row, all you have to do is look at your knitting and see what comes next. If it's got the little scarf thing on it, it's a purl. If it's got the little V-shaped stitch here, it's a knit. So you just keep working until the last stitch and you can see that that one is going to be a purl stitch. So that is the one by one ribbing. Now let's look at the two by two. This one is the same thing. It starts off with a knit stitch on the first row. You knit the first stitch and then you knit the second stitch. Then we put our yarn to the front and we're going to purl. And you can see the two purl stitches here because I've already got this one started. Purl one and two. And then you're going to repeat those four stitches. You put the yarn to the back and you knit one, knit two, put the yarn to the front, purl, one, purl, two. And this one actually has 14 stitches on it, so it has one less than that last sample. Put your yarn to the back, and I'm gonna repeat this, those four one more time. So we got knit two stitches, yarn to the front, purl two, and then you want to be repeating the knit stitches that you began with. So we need to have two stitches left over at the end, put the yarn to the back, and knit those, okay? And then row two just repeats it in an opposite way. So you're gonna flip that over on the wrong side, and you begin by purling two. And then from here on out, you're just repeating the same four stitches that you did before where you knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, and so on. And then you end on the purl two. So yarn to the back, knit two, yarn to the front, purl two. And continue going. So, uh, let's start this project from the very beginning. Go ahead and grab your yarn and supplies. Pause your video and when you're ready, we will start by casting on for our headband. See you in a moment. So we're not gonna jump into casting on just yet. I wanna go over the pattern and we are stepping up our pattern reading level this week. On lessons one and two, we did cover knit stitches and purl stitches, casting on and binding off. So for slower tutorials and this pattern, go click down in the links below. This is an easy rated pattern. And of course the yarn we've gone over, this is kind of a lighter on the super bulky six weight yarn. So if you did have a five, that's fine too. Uh, this is uh, Bernat Softy Chunky color gray heather. The needles I am using US 11 or eight millimeter. They can be straight or circular. I happen to be using Knitter's Pride Dreams in this video, but you don't have to use circular needles. You need a tapestry needle for weaving in your tails. 
and a measuring tape is especially uh, needed because you're going to measure around your head and you can see where I've measured around uh, covering the ears on my head I measured 24 inches all the way around and then I subtracted two inches to get the knit length that I'm going to work to and I do talk about that on the next page let's jump over we talk about the headband length here and how to measure that and we do have some uh, information on gauge here you don't really need to know that but the measurement is about three inches wide by 22 inches around for the finished piece I am showing some abbreviations that we're going to be working through in this pattern so you are going to start uh, seeing patterns with that in there let's jump to the ribbing section and it talks about how uh, we're working with two by two ribbing knit two purl two is using the pattern and in a ribbing pattern the first uh, set of numbers here it refers to the knits and the second number refers to the purls and uh, then you're going to refer to that first number again to add on extra stitches so we have this nice chart here for you so if you want to change your knitting pattern to something different we've got the cast on stitches that are recommended to get the right finished width for this particular project so if you want to do the two by two and the pattern we're working on here you're casting on 14 stitches and you get three inches on the width or 7.6 centimeters now if you want to try the one by one you can cast on 15 stitches and you get approximately three and a quarter inch wide headband there okay if you want to do the one by one you cast on 15 stitches and get three and a quarter wide uh, width of headband uh, or 8.25 centimeters also if you cast on 15 stitches you can also get either one of these other two ribbing patterns which is a three by three or a three by one so that means on this first one you would knit one purl one and in the very last stitch that you have remaining you knit one on the three by three you're going to knit three purl three and then the very last three stitches you're going to knit three same thing on this one you're going to knit three and then purl one and repeat that and then the very last three stitches are going to be knit and then we talked about the two by two on that one so we're going to dive into the pattern and do that uh, this is the main instruction page you've got your cast on your stitches make changes according to the chart on the other page but this is just spelling out what I've already gone over row one is the right side you're going to knit two and then purl two and repeat see that little asterisk we're going to go to that very beginning here and you repeat this twice more okay and then the last two stitches you knit two then the wrong side row two you're going to purl two and then knit two so you're doing the opposite stitch you did before repeat that across twice more and then purl two for the last two stitches then you're just going to repeat those rows until you get your desired length my sample I'm knitting to 22 inches your number may be different so if you measure your head and your head is 18 inches all around you'll want to knit to 16 inches okay and then we're going to bind off in pattern I'll show you how to do that here you're gonna leave a long tail for seaming and then I'm going to show you how to sew these ends together so you don't have to guess on how to do it and then you're gonna weave in the ends and that's the whole pattern so let's jump in to do that right now okay a reminder for our long tail cast on you're going to pull out three times the width of your project and also leave a tail so it's about three inches wide so I'm going to pull out I've got my tail one two three and then we're going to start put the tail towards you and the ball to the back you can either put in a slip knot here or you can leave the slip knot out okay so let's just put that on as our first stitch and I am going to do the two by two ribbing so I'm going to cast on 14 stitches for the other ones you can cast on 15 if you're working with this weight of yarn and this size needle we're going to um, split that yarn the balls at the back tail at the front split it up pull it back like a slingshot you're going to scoop up at the thumb go down at the finger down at the thumb and let it go pull it uh, tighter not too tight again so it can, won't slip off 
but not um, so much so that it won't slide uh, for you, okay? Let's do that again. Pull back and go up at the thumb, down at the finger, down at the thumb, let it go, okay? Go ahead and cast on all your stitches, pause your video, and I will meet you for row one. See you soon. Row one of our two by two ribbing, we are going to knit two stitches, put in our stitch, yarn over, pull through, take the old one off, go into the next stitch, knit that stitch, pull through, old one off. I'm going to go uh, put our yarn to the front, and now we're going to purl two. Put our yarn in the front of that stitch, yarn over, push through to get that new stitch, let the old fall off. Do that again, put the yarn in the front, purl by yarning over, and push that stitch through. Okay, so we've got knit two, purl two. We're going to repeat that, put our yarn to the back, knit two, one, and two, yarn to the front, purl two, Okay, so we repeated it once, now we're going to repeat it one more time, put the yarn to the back, knit two, yarn to the front, purl two, okay, we have two stitches left, put the yarn to the back, and you're going to knit those two, so you're repeating the first stitches that you did that were knit. Okay, so this applies to any of the stitch patterns that you did. Okay, so now we're just going to knit the knits and purl the purls. That's how it's easy to remember on all the following rows. So row two, return it over. This is the wrong side. So we've got two purl stitches that we need to do. So we're just gonna put our uh, needle in front, purl that stitch. And then go to the next one, purl that stitch, yarn to the back. We don't want to get an ac accidental increase here. And now we knit two. And those four stitches get repeated twice. So we're going to yarn forward, purl two, and yarn to the back, and knit two. That's the first repeat and you can see how the columns are now lining up. Yarn to the front, purl two, one, two, and yarn to the back, knit two, one, two, and repeat the last two stitches that you did in the very beginning. So those are purls, yarn to the front, and you can see that there's a purl stitch here with that little scarf on the front, a little purl bump. So purl one and purl two. Go to the right side, and you can see those columns already nicely shaping up. They look really good. So you're just gonna continue repeating that uh, until you have the desired length. I'm gonna work until I have 22 inches. I will see you soon. So I've got my knitting uh, length all laid out on a flat surface and I pull out my measuring tape and at the other end, I'm pulling out the length that I wanna go to. Remember, uh, I measured around, I had 24 inches and I'm taking off two or two and a half inches. So I wanna put this line here on the right side right on the 22, and if you want centimeters, this is 56 centimeters. So put it right there, and then lay this out. Uh, pull it, but don't overstretch it, just kind of lay it till it's flat and it stops kind of shrinking in. All right, so now I'm ready, I want to start binding off. To bind off in pattern, you simply knit the knits and purl the purls before you pull that bind off stitch over itself. So what I mean is, uh, on this one, we've got two knits, so it's pretty simple. We just knit 
the first one. You see the second one is supposed to be a knit stitch, so go ahead and knit that. Then we're gonna pass the first stitch over the second, and that's one stitch bound off. Now we want to continue knitting in pattern, so the next stitch is a purl stitch, and you can see that, so you're just gonna put your yarn forward and purl that stitch. And then now you can pass that first stitch over the second. Remember, you can put your yarn to the back if it's easier that way. So we're just gonna pass that stitch over. And our next stitch is a purl stitch, so go ahead and purl that. So you're just working that first stitch that you come across in whatever way it would have been worked in your pattern. And that's how you knit off in pattern, or bind off in pattern. It's also called casting off as well. So we're just knitting that stitch over or lifting it the, the first stitch over the second. And then now we're on to knits. So we put our yarn to the back, knit that stitch, and move that stitch over the last, knit again, pass that over, bound off several stitches now. Just keep going and pause your video as you need to. And then when you get down to the last two stitches, uh, unpause your video and we'll work those together. Okay, knit that stitch over. We're just gonna pull this on through. Go ahead and pull out uh, three times the width that you're going to be sewing. So I'm just going to pull across. We've got one width, two, and three, plus a little tail. Go ahead and cut that yarn, and then now you can just pull that on through. You should have two tails. One is long and one is short. The short side is on your cast on edge. Let's go ahead and weave that tail in right now. It's gonna be easier to do that now. Go ahead and thread that through, and I have a trick for weaving in tails for ribbing. So I'm gonna turn it over onto the wrong side. The right side is the one where it has the two edges of knit stitch columns here and then the two in the middle. I'm gonna turn it over and work our yarn over to this column. You can go into the middle of the column here or you can go to the uh, this side over here. So just go up and under here. Okay, so I'm in between the two and I'm going to go behind this first stitch. You see the two legs of this V stitch here that's doing that. We're gonna go behind the first leg of the stitch and in the middle. So we're behind it and going up in the middle and pulling our yarn through, okay? So uh, then I'm going to uh, have my yarn come back through because I had gone all the way over. I'm just getting this into the right position. So. Now I'm gonna go up to this next column and we're gonna go behind it and up through the middle again, okay? Now when we pull through, it makes this line follow this line here with our tail. So we're gonna go up to the next one and we'll just do several at a time here. So go behind the next one and up through the middle and then whip your, your needle all the way around and go behind the next one up and through the middle and keep doing it over and over again, just kind of whipping around your tapestry needle. Do several and then pull up. You can see it just guides that yarn right up and I kind of stretch out my knitting and it really hides in there pretty well, okay? So just uh, do a few more of those, okay? And you can come back down, just kind of turn around. Uh, I just kind of go underneath the leg of the stitch here to the other side and then you can just go through a few more of these and pull on your yarn and trim it. We're going to sew the end of our headband up to uh, make it follow in a pattern just like this one here. So we're going to thread our needle through I've got my wrong sides together, so the right side that I want, the pretty side, is gonna be on the outside. This edge here is my cast on edge. This here is my cast off or bind off edge. We're gonna put the two of them together. I have my yarn coming from my bind off edge, and then I'm going to come up 
through this very first stitch. You've got uh, two knit columns here. We're gonna go to the outside knit column and we're gonna go to the very last stitch here. So you're kind of coming up between this last V stitch, just halfway, okay? Come through there and it connects the two pieces. And now I want to go to my first knit column on my bind off edge. And so we're just going through both of those stitches right there. Go all the way through. So you're coming the back of that stitch uh, through both of them and coming up towards um, the outside here. All right, now we're gonna come down here and on the cast on edge, we're gonna come through sort of half stitches and then we're gonna go through whole stitches on the bind off edge. So it's gonna take me just a moment to show you and then you'll just continue repeating all the way down. So we're gonna go back to where our yarn came out before halfway in between this first column and then we're going to come uh, up through the middle of this second column here. So there's another column right here and you see that V-shaped stitch and we're just right along the edge of where the cast on edges. Pull through and then up here, this is our um, bind off edge, we're just going to go behind this very first stitch that has that V-shaped stitch and come through the whole thing, okay? Let's see, yeah, that's the first one. Go through the whole thing, and then now you can come down here and you can see where this long yarn is coming from. That's that halfway point. So we're gonna go down through the middle of this column here, of the knit column, and then we're gonna come up halfway between this purl stitch and this column right here. Okay, so you're always catching two on each side. It's just you're doing halfway over here and a full one up here. If I made them both full on each one, it actually ends up jogging the stitches over and it doesn't actually look right. So let's pull that on through. And I know it's the same color, but I'm trying to just leave the yarn long so you can really see it. Okay, and then we're gonna come up to the top. You can see where you came out from before. So just go down in that area and then come uh, through both of these stitches, you can see the V-shaped stitch underneath this pearl bump here. We're just coming underneath there, pulling through both stitches. It's, it's actually just one stitch. We're just going through both legs of the stitch. And then come back down here and you can see where one was coming out. You're just going to go down into that spot there. So you're going down through halfway of that stitch. And then now you're coming up through this one and you can see this pearl bump on this side so you know you're doing it right because you're going to always wrap around these pearl bump stitches here so we'll go around okay and then come up and you can see where I'm going to go down where this long piece came out and then here's another one of these uh, pearl bumps so here we go we're grabbing both of these legs and going through let's come back to this side and we're going to catch half where we came out before and then we're going to go halfway in this knit column and now it's going to a little bit more familiar to you so we did the half over here we're going to do the whole up here and so these knit columns are going to be really easy to spot we're going to go through the whole thing come back down you go through half again come up go through the hole come back down half knit half purl Come up, you're gonna go through the hole, and I'm, I'm coming above this edge, okay? This is the bind off edge. Do the hole, come down, half. Just keep going, and when we are done, we're gonna pull it, all this tautness. Now, we can actually do that now if you want, so go ahead and kind of pull on it, and you can just pull the slack like this. You can see how those stitches are now lining up. So this is actually that stitch. And I'm using the same color here, but you can see how it disappears when it's the same color. So yes, you can pull this tighter as you go and begin, and I was keeping it loose so you could see it a little bit easier. 
All right, so, and then we just kind of pull on that and then keep going, okay? So um, just continue moving uh, forward with this and we'll meet at the end here. See you in a moment. Up at the top, I just did this last, uh, or second to last full column going down uh, through the middle of this uh, second column here and the middle of the first column over here. And now I need to go through completely this first column over here. So it goes out the back. And then I can come here and do that last half stitch. Okay. Now, before I weave in this tail, just the way we did in the very beginning, you can see it's a little bit wider. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it. And it just kind of pulls out the extra slack there and I can make sure it's the right consistency for my width here. And it is going to have a little bit of a seam back here, uh, but it has such a nice look to it. Okay, so once I've got it to where I want it, you can just weave in your tail, just as we've done before. You can go into this seam because it does have some bulk to it. If you want to just do that, this is kind of a little cheater way to do it, <laughs> but it's really easy. And then once you have it in several stitches, uh, go ahead and kind of go back over itself and make sure it has a nice, good connection to where it's not going to be wiggling its way out. So I, I like to kind of double back on itself and go through where I just was. Make sure it's in there pretty secure before I do anything else. There we go. So that's in there really well. Trim that off and you are done. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about rib stitches and making a headband today on this video. Our next lesson is lesson five and you're going to be working with the seed stitch and learning how to make that. It is a great addition to your skills. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.